I suppose I have a natural gift for it. Good morning from another sunny day in Manchester. Enough of the jokes. I think it's about time me and you sat down and had a serious conversation about the price of football boots right now. Come with me. We'll get a drink. We'll sit down. Let's go. That'll do. Well, would you look at that? Oh, we got these as well. Can you believe it? So, retro boots, classics. We all love them. You know what? They're expensive. There's a lot of reasons for that. In this video, I'm gonna sit down. It's gonna be a lot of talking, not a lot of anything else. But I'm gonna try and explain to you guys the economics of the current boot market, if you will, why some things are so expensive, why a lot of people are overcharging, in my opinion, for stuff that doesn't deserve to be as expensive as it is. I'm gonna try and explain to you how I work out the price for boots, and if you wanted to sell a pair, how you would do the same to make sure that you come out at a fair price for what you're selling, which ultimately means you have more chance of selling the product, and it means that someone isn't gonna get ripped off if they're trying to buy something they really want. So, I'm gonna preface this by starting off that anyone can sell anything they want for whatever price they like. You can, if you've got a pair of these, you can set your price at whatever you want for them. Doesn't mean they're gonna sell, but if I wanted to list these online for a thousand pounds, that's perfectly fine. I'm sure no one would buy them, but it's your prerogative to set the price for something at whatever you believe it is worth to you. The first thing when it comes to pricing is how much is the item worth to you as the seller? For instance, for me, if I were to sell a pair of boots from my own collection, such as these Joe Cole Match One Chelsea Nike Tiempos custom made, sentimental value for me, being a Chelsea fan and being someone who grew up watching Joe Cole, idolizing him, through the roof. These are a pair in my collection. Personally, I don't think I'll ever sell. If someone offered me crazy money, maybe I would. But, you know, for someone who is, say, like an Arsenal fan, you know, these might be worth 50 quid because they don't care about Joe Cole. They don't care that he wore the boots. It's just some old night tempos. Or a pair of Magistas like this. To some people, they might not be worth anything. Say they don't like bright boots, they don't like sock boots. To them, they wouldn't pay anything for them. But to someone who used to wear this exact pair, has fond, sentimental value attached to the pair and they really want to get them back and relive the nostalgia of when they used to wear them, that obviously adds a lot of value to them, they'd be willing to pay more than someone else. So the first thing is, obviously you're entitled to charge whatever you want, doesn't mean stuff's going to sell, but I think certain people have certain responsibilities once you reach a point in the market where you need to try and price stuff fairly in order to make sure that the impact you have on the rest of the market doesn't throw things out of line. So, I've been talking for a hot minute. I'm gonna show you a few pairs of boots we've got in right now and try and explain how I personally price stuff. Here we go. Right here, we have a couple of pairs that are staple PRB items. These are brand new mid-tier Predators. Now both of these are a size six. So these are things that you have to take into account when you're pricing something. There's a whole list of factors. Size, condition, age, rarity, stud type, colorway, all these kind of things that you need to think about when it comes to pricing. So I'm now gonna speak a little bit about the categories and go into detail on what impact that has on the price of a pair of boots. The key categories when it comes to pricing any pair of boots, you have to take into account, obviously, what the boot is and what tier it is. These are top tier power swerves, okay? If you know anything about boots, you'll know how to tell the difference between top tier, mid tier, etc. And if not, feel free to reach out and ask someone who will know the difference, because that is probably the main indicator of a price point. You have to know what the actual boot is when you're selling in order to come up with the right price. Next factor for me, which is a big one, is condition. And now a lot of people out there will say, nine out of 10 condition, perfect boots, worn once. Are they actually worn once? No, you need to be honest about condition. For instance, for me, this pair here, they just sit in my collection, okay? If you can see, they have a little bit of cracking to the stripes where the gold is coming away. They've been used, they have scuffs around the toe. They're coming away a little bit here. All the studs have been used. For instance, these personally, I would qualify as say, for the boot, an eight out of 10 condition. You could still wear these. The stripes would probably crack on them. They may be prone to damage due to age anyway, but be honest about the condition that the boots are in. 
you might think, mm, I'll say they're a nine out of 10 because I want to charge someone an extra 20 quid. But when they get the boots, if they're gonna wear them and they fall apart straight away, or if they're to go in a collection and it turns out they're not in as good a condition as you said they were, you're in some trouble because things are gonna go wrong. Now, the next thing to mention when it comes to pricing boots is comparisons. Okay, it's like pricing anything else. If you know anything about property, for instance, you would have comps, so comparable sale values around the area and type of house that you'd be selling. You have to look at the same thing for boots, okay? The only time where really you can just make whatever price you want is if you own something that is the only pair in the world. If it's a player issue pair or a prototype, a sample, something like that, you know, you can look at what other similar things have sold for before, etc. but you know, in that case, it's a bit different, but when it comes to selling something like these that I sell a lot of, the Adipower Absolion, again, mid-tier pred, you have to look at what other people have charged before, kind of the people who set the tone of the market, i.e. the big sellers, and then maybe minus some off that, because let's be honest, if you are just someone selling a random pair on eBay or on another selling site, or you're a new seller that's just started and you don't have, you're not trusted yet, you are, don't have a big, a portfolio of sales you need to know and understand where you sit in the market and what value you add this might sound a little bit unfair to some people but if you are for instance BW rare boots for you classic soccer cleats etc anyone like that who is a big name in the market who's been doing it a long time has built up tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of followers and has a huge portfolio of clients that are looking for stuff you can charge more. You set the tone for the market because you've put the work in and you've earned the right to. Someone like me, who is kind of, I would say, mid-level player in the game, I look at what the top sellers charge for stuff. I look at what people who uh, have sold pairs before have sold things for. I judge based on the people who follow me, the kind of thing they want, like what is the most popular model for me that I sell, what do people ask me for the most, what are the most popular sizes. I calculate all of these things to put together a price. So I'll give you an example with these. This is one of our best sellers for PRB. Again, we're a little bit different because I sell a lot of mid-tier boots and not a lot of people do. So it's hard to find comparable prices for boots that other people weren't selling. One that gave me a bit of an advantage because it means if I'm one of the only people who's really selling a lot of them, I can kind of dictate the price a bit more. But two, it does make it hard because I don't want to charge a crazy amount that puts people off buying and makes me look stupid. But I also don't want to charge too little for a product that I really believe is worth, worth buying, worth wearing, worth a decent amount of money. So for me, I sell these usually depending on size, ranging from anywhere to from 110 pounds to like 130 pounds, including UK postage. Now, what I do when it comes to pricing a mid-tier model like these, or like these, is look at what the current going rate for the top tier model is. So for instance, if it was a power swerve Absolion, I would look at the top tier model, if they were brand new, same condition, same size, for these Rome power swerves, these tend to, at the moment, go for about 300 quid, brand new in box, and I think that's a fair price, considering they are a limited edition model, hard to find, awesome colorway, amazing boot, really rare, collector's item, 300 quid, brand new in box, for me, is a fair price. So, if I have the mid-tier version, which is much less of a collector's item, more something someone's gonna play in, but I still think a really good quality boot in terms of construction, materials, still looks the part, still got the nostalgic feel to it that people want. I think if the top tier goes for 300, I'll slash that in half. 150, brand new in box, same size. I think that's a fair price. You're taking one step down. To play in, it's maybe 30% less good, let's say, and I'm charging 50% of the price. I think that's fair. But for someone who doesn't have, you know, 12,000 people on Instagram following you, wanting predators, wanting stuff to play in, wanting that style, maybe you'd struggle to sell it for 150. Maybe you then need to think about, do I need to drop it down a little bit? Do I understand my place in the market and how much of a chance I have to find the right person? If you're someone who's just selling one pair of boots, you're trying to find the one person that wants that pair. For someone like me or a bigger seller who has thousands of people who come to them already looking for these things, we know we have the person who wants the boots. It's just about putting it at a fair point to make sure that everyone has a chance to get the boot and everyone at the end of the day will be happy. I'll sell it, make some money, someone will get the boot that they want and they'll feel like they haven't been overcharged for it. So that's an example that I can give you. 
on how to price things. I need some caffeine after all that talking. Ooh. So the big points for me that I can give to you in terms of trying to come up with the right price for the boot that you're selling is know what it is that you're selling, the specifics, the model, know roughly what the going rate is for it in the market and if you're not sure, ask someone who will know. When you find the going rate, understand your likelihood of sale, understand your place in the market and what you can warrant to charge someone else. Also take into account how much it means to you and how much you want to make out of the sale. You should sell something for a price that you're happy to let go of it for. If it's something you really care about, that's obviously going to be more. If it's something that you've bought to sell on on purpose to make profit, don't price yourself out of a sale. You really need to make sure you're honest about the condition, make sure that you price it fairly for the size, depending on where in the world you're selling, because different places in the world, different sizes are popular. Okay, nines, tens, elevens for me are popular. Sellers out in Malaysia, China, etc. you want UK five, six, seven. So, you know, understand the market that you're selling into, price it fairly, be honest about the condition, think to yourself, is this a price that I would happily pay for this item? And if you can honestly say to yourself, yes, and I would be happy with the condition it arrives in, etc., then, you know, that's a fair price. So what I've done here is used my 50,000 pounds fine art degree to draw you a graph. Now, if you've ever been to school, you will have seen a graph before. And what this is basically trying to depict is the ratio of price increase and money spent in the boot world over the course of time from when I started uh, in February of 2020 through to the year we are in now, 2021, and what I predict will happen fairly soon. So, 2020 starts, February time, I'm selling boots. At this point, I can name you maybe six or seven boot sellers that I see on Instagram that have been doing it for a while. The OGs, we will refer to them as. Some big, some smaller, um, but all people I respect greatly. They'll be doing it. I decided to start doing PRB uh, February 2020, back here, okay? So I've been doing it for a couple of months, and then, bang, lockdown hit. Lockdown one, I'm talking the OG like a year ago. And what happened here was suddenly everything changed. People who love football suddenly couldn't go and play football. So they were bored, they had more disposable cash because people were furloughed, at least in the UK, a lot of people were furloughed. Obviously not everyone was, so I appreciate that, but I feel like this definitely had an impact because a lot more people had mortgage holidays, furlough, etc. They had some disposable income or at least money at the time they thought they would put into starting a new hobby or a new passion, collecting football boots. So, and also they couldn't play football, there wasn't football to watch, so people were grabbing onto things to do with football to keep them entertained. As we're going through lockdown, this is a positive for me. I've started and I'm starting to build some real traction. The page is growing, people seem really interested, following's growing nicely. But what that means when more people are coming across the niche of football boot reselling and getting involved in it, lots of people think, I've got some spare time right now, some spare cash. I like football boots. I could definitely do that. So we have what I'm going to call the seller boom. And this is in lockdown one, suddenly the amount of sellers, at this point I could maybe name you like 15, 20 Instagram sellers, suddenly there's a hundred like that. Almost instantaneously, people are starting their own pages and fair enough, anyone can start, but a lot of those people started and have gone, a lot more people have started since and I'm sure people will go but everyone kind of dips their toe in the pond and it means the market becomes very oversaturated. But it also means lots and lots more people are getting involved in it and are interested. So more people are buying classic boots, looking at classic boots, which means in general, even though there's a lot more sellers, you think people would undercut each other. No, people would see what other people are doing and wanted a piece of the pie. So everyone was buying boots, looking for the same stuff and it meant prices were going up and up and up gradually because they think, oh, they're selling something for 120, I'll charge 125. Someone else will be like, well, they get 125, I think these are better, I'll charge 135. So prices soared and soared and soared until I would say maybe around September, October 2020, when we thought the world was starting to normalize a little bit, things kind of plateaued. Some people were going back to work, things like that. And the market hit, in my opinion, a crazy high. Prices had gone, you know, supernova for a lot of stuff. It was like the boot, world the boot selling world had really become like a part of people's lives become a thing so there's a lot of money moving around in boots and prices were up there because there's 
a lot of demand and a lot of supply, which means there's a lot of business. See now, when we come towards the start of 2021, we've had another seller boom. We went back into another lockdown and people are seeing all these pages that have come and gone and then they're seeing the ones that have stayed. And again, people are thinking, I could do that, blah, blah, blah. I've seen lots and lots of new sellers recently and they are coming in hot charging stupid prices okay i'm talking used pairs of predator pulses for 250 300 quid i'm talking nike vapors or hypervenoms for three 350 400 quid for stuff that at this point you would have bought for 200 quid okay at this point maybe 220 quid if we're talking like a pair of vapors and here people are trying to charge 400 pounds for like a pair of player issue vapors that aren't that special okay and what I've predicted here is that it's going to reach critical mass. People are going to get sick of it and they're going to think, you know what, I'm not paying 500 quid for a pair of boots. I'm not paying 350 quid for a pair of Predator Pulsers. I'll just buy the new boots. I'm not bothered. I'm playing football again. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't care about that. And I think prices will come back down. Things will start to even out. People will give up on selling pages, stuff like that. I think as with anything, there will be peaks and troughs. And I predict through 2021, Hopefully things will kind of even out at a point where people realize that prices need to be fair in order to keep things rolling because you can hike prices as much as you want and try and charge tons of money for stuff, but eventually people will stop buying it. It's the same as anything else. Look at the world of investment, look at cryptocurrency, stuff like that. When it gets too high and only the super rich can afford things, or in this case, people who have five, 600 pounds for like a pair of breads, something like that, it alienates a lot of people, people get bored, overall the market shrinks and dies off because there aren't eyes on it because people give up because they're sick of what they're seeing. So hopefully that explains a little bit about the market. Obviously there is still yeah, it's supply and demand and what we do in terms of supplying boots you cannot find in stores anymore. You can't just, I mean, well, you can go online and Google it now and there's tons of websites, there's tons of great sellers, but product that is hard for us to find to sell it obviously means when there's limited numbers, prices are always gonna be you know, subject to demand and audience and all these factors. So I can't guarantee prices will be fair. I can't guarantee everyone will be able to afford classic boots going forward. But me personally, I try to keep things as fair as I can, charge a price that I think is reasonable and hopefully you guys do too. Now, I hope this video has helped people. I hope you found it informative. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not calling anyone out in particular. I'm not trying to have a pop at people. Some stuff I see makes me angry and sometimes I'll message a seller and be like, what are you doing? Sometimes people will ask me what I think of their price and I'll be honest, I'll say that's way too much in my opinion. But at the end of the day, it's all subjective. So season ticket holders, thank you very much for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, we do tons of football boot related stuff, vlogs, behind the scenes of what I do as a seller. Also gonna start rolling out more kind of general football related content, opinions, hot takes, podcasts, stuff like that coming soon. So please hit the subscribe button. It's a free season ticket. The cheapest one you'll get at any club, Proper Retro Boots FC. It means that you can be involved in the conversation, in the boot market, in the world. All these things, I want you guys to come with me on a journey into the wonderful world of football boots from said time to said time whatever you define as retro that was very vague but yes hope you've enjoyed if you have please like the video please subscribe if you've watched this far you're a bloody legend i'll get you a tin of monster in fact anyone who comments below if you comment the word monster in the comments i'm going to pick one person who's commented monster who's watched this far and whoever i pick I'll send you a message, send me your address, I'll order you a pack of Monster from Amazon as a thank you for watching. Right, that's enough from me guys. Comment Monster below if you got to this point. Like it, share it with people, subscribe. It's been a pleasure, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.